Imagine being able to fly, levitate, or even bilocate. Sounds like a cliché superhero movie, right? But these were considered common feats for some medieval saints. What if I told you that some saints were known more for their quirky exploits than their virtuous deeds? There was even a saint who was, believe it or not, a dog. In the heart of medieval France, there was a greyhound named Guinefoot. Not your average pooch. Guinefoot was venerated as a saint, a status typically bestowed upon the human faithful. This intriguing tale begins when the dog's master, a knight, left his infant son in Guinefoot's care. Returning home, he found his nursery in chaos, with Guinefoot covered in what appeared to be blood. Believing his son to be dead, the knight slew the hound in a fit of rage. The knight then discovered his son safe and sound, lying next to a dead viper. Guinefoot, the loyal protector, had slain the venomous serpent, risking his life for the child. The blood was not of the innocent, but of the vile intruder. Stricken by remorse, the knight buried Guinefort in a well, building a shrine around it. Word spread of the heroic hound, and locals began to revere Guinefort as a local folk saint. While the Catholic Church never officially recognized Guinefort, his story captured the hearts of the local populace. They visited his shrine, seeking protection for their own children. Saint Simeon Stylites was not your average saint. Born in Syria in the fourth century, he was already a devout Christian by the time he was 16. However, his path to sainthood was anything but typical. Instead of ministering to the masses or performing miracles, Simeon chose a rather unconventional route. He decided to live atop a pillar. Simeon was a part of the ascetic movement, a group of early Christians who practiced extreme self-discipline and abstention. For nearly four decades, Simeon lived on that pillar, enduring heat, cold, wind and rain. His only sustenance came from boys from the local village who would climb up the pillar to bring him flatbread and goat's milk. His pillar, or stylite, as it came to be known, became a place of pilgrimage. People flocked from near and far to witness this peculiar spectacle and to seek Simeon's advice and prayers. But why the pillar? Simeon believed that by living in such a way, he was renouncing the world and its temptations, physically distancing himself from earthly distractions, and it worked. Despite, or perhaps because of his unusual lifestyle, Simeon was venerated as a saint. His story spread far and wide, inspiring others to follow in his footsteps and giving rise to a whole movement of pillar-dwelling ascetics. He actually set a very odd trend in Christianity, one we're not likely to see repeated anytime soon. Saint Joseph of Cupertino apparently did more than just dream of flying. Imagine the scene, a quiet monastery in the 17th century, where a seemingly ordinary friar named Joseph was about to become extraordinary. Joseph was often thought of as absent-minded, even slow. He struggled with the basic tasks of his religious studies. Despite these difficulties, he was ordained as a priest. But it was his profound devotion, particularly during prayer, that would set him apart. It's said that during these moments of deep reverence, Joseph would often go into ecstatic trances. Now that's not particularly unusual for a devout friar, but what happened next certainly was. Witnesses reported that he would rise from the ground, levitating in mid-air. These instances were not isolated. They were reported time and time again, not just by his fellow friars, but by a multitude of witnesses. So much so, that his superiors even restricted him from community prayers, fearing his flights would cause too much disruption. Now, you might be thinking, is there any historical evidence to back these accounts? Well, the church certainly believed there was. After his death, Joseph's life and miracles were rigorously examined in a process called canonization. This process, which included a detailed investigation of his reported levitations, led to Joseph being declared a saint in the year 1767. Some skeptics might cast doubt on these tales, attributing them to the exaggerations of devout believers or the misinterpretations of natural phenomena. But the accounts of St. Joseph's levitations remain a fascinating part of church history. If you've watched this far, you should really subscribe. There's more videos like this one already, and you might enjoy some more weird stories. Cheers.